Today's adventure begins in Buena Park, California. I'm going to be covering a little bit of ground today. But starting off here, right across from pirate-themed dinner adventure, is this former Burger King that's shaped like a castle because across the street is Medieval Times. It's no longer a Burger King, but it still kind of looks like a castle. I'm going to get myself a piping hot caffeinated beverage in here and then go up to LA area. Welcome everyone. Out of the woo here as the recording of this Monday, October 24th, 2022. Wearing an appropriate t-shirt, Canon Films, a very obscure kind of deep cut when it comes to the movie industry. I love almost all in a weird roundabout way, a good variety, probably 75% of all their movies are kind of guilty pleasures of mine. They are, there's some good ones. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'm gonna go by their headquarters, which is north of here, up in Los Angeles. But take a look. You can definitely see how this used to be a castle, which makes sense. Welcome to Medieval Times, a journey into the past. Cable Guys, Medieval Times is right over there. I'm gonna walk over here and show, show a couple things too. And then head up to LA. Join me. I'm, there's gonna be a lot of stuff covered today. Shall you? That's good. Yeah, Matthew Broderick and Jim Carrey walked right across, parked over on this other side, walked across there, and into that building. Over here used to be Movie Land Wax Museum. And, I don't know, 2015, 2016, when I lived in Orange, I would walk over here. In fact, I did a couple videos of handprints that used to be right here. Also, interesting fact is that roundabout building right there in the middle, that used to be a Starbucks also. But the Wax Museum was over here, and it was before my time. It closed before I ended up moving here or visiting SoCal. You can see knots off in the distance. But all the handprints were all right here. The likes of, of Ani, that's right! His handprints were here as long as the, and quite a bit of others. A veritable treasure trove of Hollywood history, even though this is the OC, Orange County, was all right in here. I have to wonder what happened to all the handprints. Were they salvaged or were they completely erased from existence? The sign, the Movie Land sign, which was right here, was salvaged and I believe saved and someone owns it. I don't know, maybe a personal owner? but someone took it. I don't believe I'll be able to walk up to the building but can show one of the last remaining from the facade, not part of the wax museum. Oh, wow, I stand corrected. Okay, this was a Starbucks, which I frequented a couple times. You'd walk in, you'd park over there and walk in. And I never noticed that on the side, they had left off the Movie Land Wax Museum here at 7711. Beach Boulevard, Buena Park, Boulevard, not Boulevard, Boulevard in Buena Park. See this Art Deco style building. But right there on the side, take a look. A little remnant of the past. Supposedly they were gonna build like a butterfly garden or some sort of butterfly attraction. Oh, I think a butterfly just flew by. What are the odds? But clearly, construction has halted. All right, moving on. You now, it's really weird how your mind works. So I lived not too far from here, down in Orange. Well, I lived in Anaheim as well. I lived in, in Orange, we did the Orange Circle in 2015, 2016. I traveled for about a year, a little more than a year. Then I moved to Hollywood for two years. Then I moved to Anaheim for two, two and a half years. But in that 2015-2016 era, I would frequent this spot, even sometimes even have my camera and show what was here. And that whole era of my life is kind of flashing back now, just from simply walking by here. Not just me being here, but me living near the Orange Circle. It's kind of weird how the mind works, right? Like the corner of my, like the, like the corner of my mind or stuck in the corner, something in the corner of my mind. And after driving a bit in the neighborhood next to Carthay Circle, you know, the theater, Carthay Circle Theater has been long gone, but some of these houses are still here, these storybook homes, which is pretty cool, decorated all for 
All Hallows Eve, which is slowly approaching. Halloween. They got some little skeletons over here in the pool. Oh, Sin City, where the party never ends. Look at this. This is kind of in the neighborhood of where Canon Film Headquarters is. A couple miles away, maybe, not even that far. Traffic's really backed up here. The circle over here is really confusing, and traffic this time of day, very, very congested. But I'm gonna walk across. I was here maybe three, four years ago, did a whole video on it. I'll do a little update right now. The only thing that really looks the same like it did back when Walt premiered Snow White is this little area here, which used to have some water in it. There was like a little retention pond, and there was a sculpture here in the middle, and the theater was over there. Pepper in a little, starting to walk, watch, watch where I'm walking here. Pepper in a little, little Disney and movie history, kind of mixed in today. But this has always been here. This was all water. But the sculpture still remains to this day. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome to think that Snow White animated film premiered right over there. And at Hollywood Studios in Central Florida, as well as at Disney California Adventure DCA, there's a recreation of the theater that used to sit right there. And I think there's a plaque over here. Oh yeah, so it's not a informational placard based on Carthay, but it's on the fountain that used to be here to the gallant pioneers of 49. This was a fountain right here. You can see the holes where the water would come out of it there, kind of spew up, and then this was the little waterway here at Carthay Circle. This still is Carthay Circle. This whole housing development is known as Carthay. You see a lot of new condos and apartments have sprung up over there. Be kind of neat if someone painted on here. Sometimes you'll see people, they'll paint on these electrical boxes. Be kind of neat to, to put a Carthay Theater spray painted on here. It's for old time's sake. It's not though. And just to confirm right here, look, Carthay Circle neighborhood. They're having a meeting. And they're also promoting their Halloween events coming up on the 31st. Yeah, really is Carthay Circle. Some of these houses are really unique looking, all storybook style. So you take a look up here, especially the roof line itself. So you got the little, it's like a lion or a tiger or a bear, oh my. It's up on top of that pillar. But the very unique shingles and style of the roof. And then of course the chimney there too, all storybook style. Kind of similar to Snow White. That premiered at the theater, half a block away from here. This zombie here in the front yard of one of these homes, well, the one I passed on the way over, says what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's got like, look at this. It's got a bunch of fingers here for a necklace. A little skeleton on a swing. Ooh, some twins come and play with us, Danny. Forever and ever and ever. Hey, just about a mile away, corner of San Vicente and 6th Street, I have arrived at the former Canon Films headquarters. Now no longer used for that organization because there is no Canon Films anymore. However, still have similar type of billboards on top of this. There are two really good documentaries, easily searchable, about the two guys that started Canon, how they had, you know, how their whole business operation worked, starting off with making independent, kind of cheesy, bad movies for a low cost that would end up making more than it took to make them. So it was kind of a good business plan, and not a lot of people were doing that at the time. And then they got ahead of themselves and started putting out big, quote unquote, blockbusters by their standards. Perfect example, it's over the top with Sylvester Stallone. 
who they offered him a lot of money, said, I don't want to make an arm wrestling movie. So they kept offering him more and more and more. Oh, look at these over here. Look at these cars in here. Over the top was one, Masters of the Universe, the live action with Dolph Lundgren. That was another one. Delta Force, of course, missing in action. Death Wish 2, Bronson, pretty much that era of Charles Bronson. And Chuck Norris, both the Chucks, took place right in here. And I always wanted to visit this because in this building right here, which there is some car storage and then some lease in there. So this was all part of the organization. In fact, their office was right over there. And they had a party, they had a kickoff party for their new building to celebrate it. And they had a cavalcade of Hollywood, I don't want to say royalty, but the actors that they had on staff and had under contract all appeared. And they had on top of the roof, they built an external pool, like a, a, a pool that they added on top of the roof. And the premiere, with the lights and everything, was inside this parking structure. True story, inside this structure, a Hollywood premiere in this now undescript parking structure. I have always been into not only low budget, but also cult films, things like that. This organization, one of my favorites, I have so many Blu-rays that I have ordered over the years, watched with commentary, deleted scenes, you know, you know, extra footage and stuff like that. I just kind of kind of dive into the repertoire of Canon. That's why I'm, like I said, I'm wearing an appropriate shirt. And this has been a place, even when I lived here, I never did go by to check it out. So today I wanted to finally do that. I'll show some photos that are from a couple of those documentaries. There's not a whole heck of a lot of photos of what the inside looked like then, but there are some of the exterior. Yeah. So this is awesome. I might be the only one that enjoys this, but yeah, I always wanted to see this. All right, yeah, here is an example. Cannon headquarters, Beverly Hills, California. And look up on top of the roof. There is a promotional material for Delta Force right there. Of course, Alan Silvestri, who did Back to the Future, he performed the theme song for that. Well, not necessarily performed, but he was the composer who wrote it and did the music. He did a lot of soundtracks back in that era. and. There's a rumor, you know, you never know if some of the stuff is true or not, but they would play the Delta Force soundtrack when you'd go in the office. I'm gonna walk over there, but this was the main office. Had the premiere in here, but they would, you'd walk in and they had that triumphant soundtrack from Delta Force playing inside there. Ah, it's been so cool to experience. Now looking at this photo, this is date stamp February 22nd, 1986. I believe that is when the premiere took place and was held, or at least that's when this photo was taken, but across the top said the Canon Group Incorporated with the logo, same one I have on my shirt, two billboards up top, and this was the office right here through these doors right over there. Still looks the same, kind of. And what I just showed is adjacent to the parking structure. It all kind of looks the same, so parking structure's over there. But the photo I just showed from the little still from the video from that documentary is right here. You can see that some ivy and vines are kind of dangling down that weren't there back in 1986, and they have removed the the Canon Group Incorporated and the logo at the top, and naturally hasn't been, hasn't been here for decades. Here's a photo of Chuck Norris up on the roof. They put a makeshift roof on top of where the fake pool was on the very top of the structure. You can kind of see that above his head. And when they walked in the premiere, they had to walk up to the top of the parking structure, up the angled driveway portion. I'm not gonna be able to really match that because I can't get in there, it's gated, but. I could kind of look in. They had the, they had the two lights shining up to the heavens, basically in the entrance to the parking area. They would have walked all the way up top. Now there's like some sort of a, a golden guy with wings up there, like a sculpture up top. But they had on either side, almost where these plants were, they had the the lights that would kind of act as beacons for a traditional Hollywood premieres. So they had one here, and they had one here. All the guests would pull up in their limos, very unorthodox, and they would walk in this way and they would head in and then go up to the top of the roof. Check out these cars that are in here. It's very interesting. There's a couple over there in like bubbles. 
So I'm guessing they would go up this way and then walk up to the next level. So I can't go in here, obviously there's signage, but yeah, they'd go in this way. This, this is that photo right there. That is so interesting. All right, looking at both of these, they're putting the billboard up for the Delta Force or taking it down, vice versa, but probably putting it up. This is when they were getting ready for the premiere. So you see on the top of the roof, they have a, a makeshift temporary roof that went over the pool and where the premiere took place of. And not only I showed the other angle where they had the Canon International on the side, but they also had Canon Group written on this side as well. The entire building was utilized. They had a smaller place, which I have not been able to pinpoint exactly where the smaller facility was before they moved in, built and moved into this one. But this is all where it kind of culminated and ended. It bit off a little more than they could chew. But their films live on. They are hugely cult classic film company. Good thing I packed my shirt to be here. It would have been not it would have been not the best scenario to be here knowing that I would have left my shirt, my Canon shirt, at home. I brought the shirt. A lot of people are honking at me. Either they like Canon films or they have no idea what I'm doing and just honking as they drive by. Take a look. This is for posterity. Yeah, real who's who of Hollywood. Well, not necessarily a who's who, but there were there were some notable names. Stallone was here. Bridget Nielsen was here. Both eventually went to be in Cobra. I love Cobra. That was also canon. A lot of movies you might not realize were canon. Were. Ooh, this would be interesting. I wonder if there's anybody that etched that. I wonder if Stallone or Chuck Norris or Bronson happen to carve their names in here. Wouldn't that be interesting? Probably not, it would be here all these decades later, but if this is dated 2005, probably not. Little markings in the tree right here. No one's carved the Canon logo in there, which probably would not be good. You don't want to damage a tree. I mean, I could just walk right in there, but I'm not going to. I mean, the pool's not up there anymore. Plus it says, you know, private property walking in there. You could walk along the sidewalk, but here's some dancing sheep. Take a look at this. Dance like no one's watching. This is a very unique building. I really like the architecture of this. I love it. The address is 6400 South San Vincent Boulevard. Look at that little, like, pigeon or something up top there. It's called the Bird of Peace. And just kind of peeking in there. It says, not supposed to go in, but just kind of peeking in there. It doesn't look like there's anything canon related left. Look up here. I mean, obviously there's a camera watching me, but look up past the camera. The feet of that sculpture. Now there is one other spot that is a, a historical building or a historical location I found an address for that I want to drive by and see if there's anything there as well. But definitely, definitely pretty cool to see this. At least the building still remains and all those films kind of live on. And VHS, DVD, Blu-ray and now streaming in crystal clear HD to watch some of that really bad film goodness that, you know, you watch it enough, it grows on you, end up loving them. Okay, I walked in, it says, please check in with the reception desk before entering. So I went ahead and walked in. There I am wearing my shirt, but I'm noticing this little area here. I don't know if there's apartments or buildings in here, but this right here, you can see, there's a photo of them doing construction in here. Oh, look at this. Okay, maybe there's some canon history here. Look at this, okay, so here's where the pool was, right on top of there. Looking for a receptionist like the sign says, but I didn't find one. But I did find a photo of them when they were 
constructing this. So I just walked right in there. The sign just said, check with the reception desk. Look up there, there must be something up. Maybe they really built a pool up there now. But the makeshift pool for the, the opening of the premiere was right there. If you look at this angle, found a photo of them constructing and building this right here. So look at the roof up here. I'll go, I'll pull the photo up. But yeah, pretty dang cool. I didn't see a receptionist though. I saw the sign saying check in with the receptionist, but there's no receptionist. And no cannon paraphernalia in here at all. But up these office up here would have been all their offices. And here's that photo I was referring to of them painting and constructing and getting it all ready. Kind of looking back the other way. So that's where I was just standing. But notice the elevators over here to the side and the very unique roof line or ceiling line and the lights. A crow was flying off over there. I found one other address. I don't even remember where I found it. I've had it on my phone for a while when pre-planning all this. But I found one other address which could have been their original office, located at 6464 Sunset. I'm gonna drive over there. And while I'm over in this area on this commute, going down Genesee, which has a couple filming locations, Nightmare on Elm Street, the Elm Street house, and then also use it for a couple of scenes from the original Halloween when Loomis is walking around. Only like one or two scenes from the original Halloween, but. The Nightmare House, I think, is right up here, if I remember correctly. I always find it interesting, though, because when you're watching Nightmare on Elm Street, you don't realize that it's just right off of Sunset Boulevard. And this house is two doors down. It's getting serious face left going on. Currently, looks like something that Freddy Krueger would reside in. But it's not. Take a look at this. Yeah, they're doing some construction on the Nightmare House also. Of course, Johnny Depp's house was right over there. Wow, did someone move out of here? Oh, what is up here? Look at this. Right up on the windowsill. Is that Freddy Krueger's shirt? Why is that up there? And I also learned a fun fact from my friend Sean Clark from ha Horrors Hallowed Ground, now fuck Sean, that they filmed one scene, I think, don't quote me on this, from the TV version of Halloween, Carpenter's Halloween, inside the Nightmare House. Weird, right? All right, found a parking spot. This here is 6464 Sunset. Sunset's where all that traffic's backed up. But this would be the building right here. You can see 6464. Now, it was somewhere in here. They did not own this entire building like they did at the other spot I was just at. They just had an office up in there or maybe possibly on the ground floor here. According to that one address that I saw. corner of Sunset and Wilcox Town. I also have this other photo. This is before they moved over to the bigger building, but I cannot exactly pinpoint where this was, even though it does look like a parking structure over here. And that looks like the four windows that are in front of me. The windows up top are not there unless they've remodeled the building, which I highly doubt they have. So I don't know where this photo was taken. But the closest thing I can see on this corner is right here. You know, they could have had the Delta Force things in these windows, and there's the part of the parking garage you see in that. But you know, all this, this is obviously original, so that's that's not that doesn't match up. That's a mystery. Also, there are a lot of ninja movies when it comes to canon films, and don't quote me on this. It's this just a speculation, but I believe one of the dozens of those classic ninja films was filmed in Hollywood, and I think possibly could have been one of the fight scenes up on top of the roof. Like I said, I'm not 100% positive, I'm just assuming this, and you know what they say when you assume something. But it looks like it would have been up there, kind of overlooking LA in that direction.
which does make perfect sense. They had the building. They're like, let's just go on the roof and just film a scene up there. It does kind of make sense, at least in my own mind. I stopped over here also at Gower Gulch, which I read something online that at the end of October, now you never know if some of this is true or not, but at the end of October, the rumor is that Gower Gulch is going away, including the ride aid that's right here, which makes a lot of sense because the article I was reading said that they were going to be building condos and apartments just like this. And it kind of reminds me of when my friend Jordan the Lion and I lived in this area. He lived a block away from me. He lives, he lives elsewhere now as well. But the ride aid, we would come up here and get ice cream, and sometimes we would go over here to a taco truck that used to be at the thrift store on the corner. And that thrift store is gone, the car wash is gone, and this condo has sprung up, which makes sense. There probably is some legitimacy to the fact that this Rite Aid and all of Gower Gulch could be on the chopping block. Will the Denny's over here go away as well? It's very interesting Hollywood history, though, because back in the day, over at the studios right over there, some of the extras from the studios would line up in here, and they would wait and try to get a part in movies. This is back in the old Western days. That's how... It has this theme of Gower Gulch and why you see like there's the assayer office, there's the cowboys, Indians all in here as well. And that is because of the Hollywood history. So if it's true and at the end of October this is going away, this might be the last time I'll be able to see this with my own eyes before it's bulldozed. Which is kind of sad because there's a lot of a lot of memories, not only old Hollywood here, but also for me. I just used to live like two blocks down the road and I'd walk over here all the time. You know, get some groceries, some snacks, some ice cream. They have some soft serve in there. You got all these Western heroes here. You got Roy Rogers, Dale Evans. Really good pizza place over there. Some noodles, things like that. Yeah, if Gower Gulch is gone by the next time I get here, it's been nice. It's been nice knowing you, Gower Gulch. Ointment cures. Darkened, darkening moods. Medicinal, become, you take this medicine, you become giddy, blissful, and talking. Now right over here is where Argyle, the topiary pig, used to stand, but Argyle's been gone for a long time. It's also kind of interesting to see that the Arclight Theater has not reopened. It's still all boarded up around the side. Yeah, take a look. The whole front ticket boost, everything. All boarded up. It's been closed for a long time. Cinerama Dome, Arc Light. Arc Light Cinerama Dome is what I meant to say. Classic. Decided to drive over to Lake Hollywood, the reservoir area. It's a neighborhood there with a really good view of the Hollywood sign. I'll drive a little closer, but it's a pretty, pretty good view from down here. I love this little spot. I recently put these fences up within the last couple of years. So you really can't go that way anymore and get any, get any angles of it. But it's right above the Hollywood Reservoir Dog Park down here. It's a neighborhood over here, Hollywood Hills. And the Hollywood sign, probably one of the best views of the Hollywood sign, other than maybe going up to the observatory or hiking up there. Love it. Sun's starting to set. And after living here for a couple of years, when I come back to visit, I know the layout of the land, I know the terrain, and I know how to get from point A to point B. Pretty much have a good handle on Los Angeles and Hollywood and the surrounding area. So when I come back, I'm not really searching for directions or trying to figure out where I'm gonna go. I just 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 go there. You know, living here for two years in this vicinity really taught me a lot on you know the, the layout of the layout of the land of LA and Hollywood. Up here too, you can see a little bit of the reservoir. And that's gonna do it for today. 
started off in Buena Park and ended in Hollywood proper. We'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.